Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I want to talk about why you should not get mutual funds. <laughs> okay, this is something that hits close to home because a lot of my friends and family members when they go to the bank, the first thing the bank will tell you is, oh yeah, you want to invest your money, okay, so put it in a mutual fund, right? Let us invest it for you. And they, they turn you away from talking about opening up a direct investing account or index funds or any of that stuff half partly because they have no idea what they're talking about right the truth is they're just like you and and the only financial knowledge that they have is what they're told by the bank so really at the end of the day you're just being sold sold the product right so I'm gonna do some screen sharing right now guys and then we'll go over a couple of things and hope hopefully you learned something okay all right guys hopefully you can hear me so I'm gonna go through an example guys with you uh, let's just type in uh, this for hypothetically Royal Bank mutual fund uh, conservative growth. Okay. Oh, conservative. Just so, just to give you guys an example. So, uh, when you go uh, and talk to your financial advisor at the bank, the first thing they'll say is, "Oh, let's do you know a test." And we're going to give you like three different, uh, the test is going to tell you whether you should be investing, you know, in, in something that's safe, mediocre, or aggressive, or extremely aggressive. And then based on the, the test, you pretty much, you know, put your money in one of the four, and blah, blah, blah. Sounds like a bunch of BS to me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, oh, that was the wrong one. I wanted to show you the one over here. So this is one of the ones that RBC has, the select growth. Oh. There we go. So just uh, check this out, guys. So when you go over here, uh, you this is one of the ones that you know RBC offers. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of RBC actually because I do bank with them and I like the people at the branch. Uh, but I like them in terms of like their customer service, their checking account, and their credit cards. But aside from that, I'm 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 against them when it comes to mutual funds. But you know, but like their direct, direct investing customer service is really good. So, uh, like like I said, I'm not hating against the banks. All I'm saying is I'm, I'm against mutual funds. I'm not a fan of someone else investing my money. I'm a fan of me investing my own money. Anyways, guys, this is it here. So you can check out the funds fact sheet. Uh, that's what you want to look for, right? The fund fact sheet for every mutual fund. Now, when you do get a mutual fund with your financial advisor, they usually give you a copy of this. So take a look at this, guys. You're gonna you're gonna find something interesting. So what do you see here? You see that pretty much this is a fund, and in this fund there are all these things, and it's made up of this many, this many percentages. So 15% of this uh, uh, fund is made up of uh, the RBC bond fund. Okay, and check this out. The, management expense ratio is 1.84 percent now it doesn't sound like a lot but that is actually a lot i'm going to explain that later on but let's pick one here okay, look look see the rbc canadian dividend fund okay let's just copy that okay and then now we're gonna go and search that one up that's all right look rbc canadian dividend fund there you go right there first one it's that easy guys now you go uh same thing fund fact sheet right in that fund, what do you have here? The expense ratio, management expense ratio is 1.76%. Okay, and what do you see? Oh, well, the top investments, the first one is the Royal Bank stock, and it's made up of 8%. The second one is TD Dominion Bank, Scotia Bank, Brookfield. You get the point, it goes all the way down. So if a mutual fund is just a fund of a, sorry, a fund of a fund that's invested into Royal Bank, stock you might as well buy royal bank stock and all uh, like you know just the ones right here like think about it this one is but and you don't have to pay the fees either this one is 1.76 percent this one is 1.84 percent are you kidding me just look royal bank stock right look at that one one share is a hundred dollars right and if you look at the growth over the last five years or even the last 20 years guys right if you, if you put your money do the math yourself in a, in a mutual fund right from look at that, from 2001 to to now that's about a 326 percent no mutual fund is going to give you 321 percent right what you, what ends up happening in a mutual fund is like every year they take more and more and more of the profits home and they give you less of a return it's not worth it you might as well just buy all of these so what do you have to do now in order to be able to 
buy these stocks? So that's the real question at the end of the day, right? So well, what you want to do is you want to open up a brokerage account. I'm just going to type it out for you guys here, okay? So the first thing you want to do is open up a direct investing brokerage account, right? So what you want to do is you want to go to the bank and you want to tell them, hey, my name is so-and-so. I want to open up a brokerage account. Uh, guys, I'm going to put this in caps lock. This is the key word. Nope, <laughs> just the first one there. Because when you say that, then they'll say, oh, okay. Otherwise, if you open up a, a, a normal account, that's just going to be an investment account where the bank invests your money. You can't see what it's invested in, right? So this is what you have to do. Now, in terms of individual stocks, I know a lot of people uh, are scared of investing in individual stocks. That's one of the purposes of going for a mutual fund is because the it's a collection of stocks so it, it is not as volatile it won't go up or down as much well i have something for that too there's something called the s and p 500 index fund so this is the s and p 500 index don't get scared of the number right this is just a list of the top 500 uh largest companies in america right who've had more than four uh, profitable quarters Right, and they it's an exclusive list, pretty much. And then every every now and then, a, a bunch of companies fall off the list, and they and a bunch of companies get added to the list. So over the long term, it does extremely well. See, maximum you can see that over here. Over the long term, it does extremely well. So this is pretty much betting on America. And this index fund right here gives you guys an, a return between eight to twelve percent. Remember that eight to twelve percentage. That's how much an S and P five hundred index fund returns for you. So what you want to do, uh, what do I do, SN, uh, sorry, S&P 500, right? So what you want to do is open up a direct investing brokerage account and then two, invest in an S&P 500 index fund. Guys, I'm not obviously a financial advisor, but I'm telling you the return on an S&P 500 index will be your mutual fund. This is not... <laughs> This is not rocket science, right? If you don't believe me, research your research it yourself. Google it, right? The S&P 500 ha has returned between eight to twelve percent per year on average, and you no mutual fund will do that, right? So this is just a heads up, and I'm just trying to help some people out. Um, like I said, when you go to the bank, most banks won't tell you uh, about this. So yeah, guys, uh, some key takeaways just to wrap everything up, right? Uh, when you go to your bank, make sure you say you want to open up, number one, open up a direct investing brokerage account. It's very important that you say that. If you don't want to go to the bank and you're not comfortable talking to people, just you can do it online. <laughs> go internet, search it, right? Pick a bank. I don't know, JP Morgan, right? Bank of America, Royal Bank of Canada, TD Bank, whatever bank it is that you, you go with, type in the bank's name. And then type in direct investing account. Uh, if you live in the States, you have a bunch of better options. Actually, you can use Fidelity, right, or Vanguard. They have There's a bunch of them you can use there. Even Robinhood, honestly, right? In Canada, we have a bunch of ones with zero uh, uh, dollar commission trading, which I'll make a video about later on too. For example, Wealth Simple, honestly, right? So pitch or Quest Trade, they're good too. Quest Trade, uh, they have cheaper fees than the actual banks. So whichever one you like, you can go with. That's not what's important. What's important is you open up a direct investing brokerage account. So one, open up a direct investing brokerage account. Number two, invest your money, right, that you put into the brokerage account into an S&P 500 index fund. Like this is, it's not that hard. <laughs> really, it's pretty simple. A lot of people want to complicate it. Uh, I'm not telling you to day trade. I'm not telling you to go in and out. I'm not, I'm not talking about quick money. I'm not even talking about swing trading or any of that stuff. This is just, it's better than putting your money in a mutual fund. That's it. This whole video is why you should not, this whole video is about why you should not invest in a mutual fund and why you should invest instead in an S&P 500 index fund, right? It gives you a big, big, big difference, guys. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. All right, guys, so a popular uh, index fund that I like to invest in, and because I'm Canadian, is uh, VFV. 
So it's pretty simple. When you have your direct investing account open, there's a search bar there. You can type in VFV, literally, like VFV. So just like how I did here. And then uh, you, this is one that you can invest in. And you can see this one here. They started it in 2012. And look how it's done since it started. 241%. And that's only from 2013, guys. So it's, uh, it's pretty amazing, right? So this is something you should definitely look into investing and definitely look at. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones. If you're American, the one I would probably go after it or look into is v VOO. That's the ticker symbol. It's been uh, a little slightly longer than VFB. But yeah, guys, look at that. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple. This is something it, good to dollar cost average on. If you don't know what dollar cost averaging is, it's just basically, you know, let's say a stock is $10 uh, today, you buy it, and then tomorrow it goes to $5, you buy it again. Uh, you didn't really, what ends up happening is you bought two shares at $15. Instead of buying two shares at 20 you bought two shares at 15 And then it, if the price goes to $8, well, you technically profited because you you bought two shares, right, at 15 So technically, it's like you bought each share for seven fifty. So if it goes to $8, you just profited $0.50 cents per share. Woo! All right? So that's, uh, that's how dollar cost averaging works. And doing it over time, you end up uh, making a lot. And then you don't risk risk having uh, bought at a bad time at a super high point of, in the price so then you're fine <clears throat> anyways guys thank you so much for watching this video i really appreciate it if you learned anything or you like this content or if even if you want to support me in this channel uh please comment down below give this uh, video a thumbs up uh ask me any questions if you want and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video